crop that I've ever grown. Um, these are my children, five of the six <laughs> behind you here, um, just out here to play and observe and be present. Um, so, uh, a little bit of background, perhaps. Uh, we milk about 550 cows here. Um, Mark and I have been part of Sheboygan River Progressive Farmers since its founding. Uh, first I was on the board, now he's on the board. Um, always from our dad, uh, just always looking to be, you know, conservation-minded, uh, responsible farmers that are, you know, very concerned about the resources that we are responsible for. So the experiment that we, that you're kind of right in the middle of here this year, we've had kind of a quest for probably 10 years or more to find some forages that are different from corn um, to feed dairy cows that will make milk. And, uh, we feel like corn is, it, it's a great feed, uh, but it takes a lot from the land. It, does, it leaves the land bare if you don't put something in between it. There's uh, you know, lots of opportunity for soil erosion during the summer when you plant it with the sun being down on the land, and after you harvest with mud, all kinds of stuff. So we've, we've tried a number of things over the years to get something growing in between corn rows. There's a lot of videos and people that will tell you you can, you know, get just as much corn and have these crops in between. I'm not saying I don't believe them. Uh, we didn't do it correctly this year, I'll tell you that. It's not a proud moment for us. It's, it's hey, if you're going to improve and try to learn, we have to make mistakes. We have to try things we've never done before. And here it is. Um, so about the original sort of experiment process. Um, we wanted to, to grow 44 inch rows of corn in twin rows to spread, spread the population a little bit and put, a, put something interceded in between that would make good forage. We had a planter lined up with a 22 inch planter that said he could plant 44 inch rows. The day before we wanted it planted, he said it wasn't gonna work. So we figured out we can shut off one of our rows on our 30 inch planter and we were going to do 60 inch twins and I blocked off the drill so that we wouldn't plant right on the corn because we've learned before that corn doesn't like to compete with stuff. Uh, it just doesn't do very well in competition, especially last year we had a plot mix and we had a heavy mix of brassicas in there and we found out they take all the nitrogen away from the corn before the corn. So this year we had some different blends. It's on the paper, some of the blends that we um, But right from the start, we messed up the planting. Uh, somehow the GPS did not we have a drill and a planter. We did this. I drilled first. We were going to plant behind it. I marked where I didn't sow. And Mark got lined up on that. And somehow, instead of twin rows, we have a population of 33,000 plants of corn all on top of each other in 60 inch rows. So that's pretty dense population. The corn's competing with itself too much to do very well. Uh, we also didn't get it to follow the track that I didn't sow the other crop in, somehow. Um, so, you know, we screwed up. We didn't get the experiment right to start out. Um, okay, so we put in, uh, there's buckwheat in all three of our trials. That was supposed to, buckwheat's supposed to come up in two days or three days. 
compressed weeds. Uh, I think it actually did a pretty good job. Now, we have a bunch of weeds here. Uh, they've come in late. I think some of that has to do with how dry it's been and just these crops aren't, you know, super robust. Uh, they've just kind of been spindly and struggling all along. We have, we're under half the rain that we've had last year. We planted this on May 17th. And from that day till now, we're in the neighborhood of eight inches of rain. Last year we had 16 and a half by this time. Um, and we have probably only two inches or so since about the second week of June. It's been really dry. I mean, the corn that doesn't have this, we have some lower ground that has corn that's nine or 10 feet tall, but it, um, a lot of our corn is really short. Um, also in the mix, so there's three different blends. You'll see there's sunflowers here and then sunflowers down there. We tried to do uh, two, two different 90 foot experiments with each plot. Um, so this first 90 feet has sunflowers, the next 90 and the following 90 do not. Um, I mentioned the buckwheat, that was for weed suppression. Um, so there's some soybeans in here, some BMR sorghum. Uh, we tried some flax to see if that would uh, improve omega-3 in the feed. Uh, sunflowers, some clover as a you know nitrogen harvester, fixer. Um, so that's pretty much what this first one is, the stuff in between the rows. Um, then the second one had a bunch of peas in, some cow peas and forage peas, again some sorghum, again some soybeans, there's some kale, and kale seems to dominate in that. Uh, right behind us there you can see those big leaves over there. Uh, there's also buckwheat in that. Uh, then the third one, the third trial, which will be the 60 to 90 feet away from here, uh, that was the mix we put in there wasn't intended so much for forage. It was more to find out if we could plant a cover crop at the same time, do well through the summer, and then you know really flourish after we took the corn off. So that has uh, hairy vetch and clover and buckwheat is the only three things in there. Um, so that's those are the things that we've tried. Um, so we just had one spray pass the day after we planted it with Roundup. Um, I don't think there was much of anything else in there. Earl, you might be able to, well, I think it was just Roundup here. Um, we, so this, uh, this was a heavy uh, winter rye that we were planting into. Um, one of the things I'm realizing this year, uh, is that the winter rye, or at least my opinion, it has to be knocked down. Uh, we sprayed it, but it stood there forever and ever, and I think the corn was really set back because it wasn't getting full sunlight. I, we know you can roll or crimp it, but you have to wait two more weeks to plant to do that. Our understanding is that it has to be around Memorial Day to roll or crimp uh, to actually get a kill off of the rye. We planted May 17th uh, and thought that spraying, the one thing I will say and that uh, doesn't apply to these fields because we got these sprayed the day after we planted, but a lot of our farm where I'm seeing we should have had the rye down uh, we were about a week later on spraying that rye than we wanted to be. Uh, we wanted to be within five to seven days of planting. And there was a rain event and some excuses from the co-op and we didn't get it sprayed until a week later. And I was tall. It was crazy. Um, so those are things, those are things we've learned this year. I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, 